Welcome back, nerds. I know that you have all been anxiously waiting to get to math today because I know it's your absolute favorite class of the day. I know. Ending your day on a high note. That's how I always see it. Luckily, all I teach is math, so I get to end every day on a high note. Anyway, yesterday we were discussing at the very end, after we got through our linear equations, we started talking about sequences, and specifically arithmetic sequences. I just wanted to recap what we did at the very end because it's going to be important to what we do today. In fact, it's all we're going to do today, it's arithmetic sequences. Again, an arithmetic sequence is a list of numbers in order that follows a pattern of either addition or subtraction. If you are adding or subtracting the exact same number to get from term to term, you're dealing with an arithmetic sequence. And the number that you are adding and subtracting from every single term to get from term to term is the common difference. We could find that common difference by taking any term and subtracting the one before it. So you, you need a common difference. Uh, you could do the 10th term minus the 9th term. Or the 26th term minus the 25th term. Whatever, it doesn't matter. Any term minus the one before it. That would give you the common difference. This is the formula for arithmetic sequences. And we're going to talk more about this formula here in a moment. I'm going to do some stuff on the other page, and I'm going to come back and write a little bit more stuff in this box. But here's what it says. The any general term, a sub n, meaning we don't know what term number it is, can be found by taking the first term and adding n minus 1 common differences. So whatever the term number is, take one away from it. You need that many common differences to be added to that first term. So if you're trying to find the 21st term, yeah, it's the first term plus 20 differences, just like that. On this page, what we know is that the three examples that we're looking at are arithmetic sequences. Our job is to write an equation for the general term for each one of these. And then after we've done that, we're going to find the 15th term. I want to be really clear about something here, guys. You could have found the 15th term without going through the process of getting the equation for the nth term. So why am I bothering? Well, I'm getting you prepared for more upper-level mathematics for the future of this class and next year, if you're maybe, or the year after. It just depends on your grade. But also, I'm trying to get you ready for all kinds of test questions. My test question could literally say, what's the equation for the nth term? A test question could say, what is the common difference? A test question could say, what is the 15th term? I could ask you lots of things with arithmetic sequences. And I just want to make sure that we develop the habits for when they're easy. That way, when they're more difficult, you'll know exactly what to do. One of the things that you do need to do, though, is you need to know that nth term formula. You have to have it memorized. And I would say the absolute best way to memorize it is to... Write it down every time you're going to use it. That's what I do. I write it every time I'm going to use it. I do that for a lot of formulas. It helps me memorize them by accident. Like that. I look at it like this and I can see what I need. I need to know a sub 1. Oh, oh, I know a sub 1, don't I? What's a sub 1? 7. Yeah, look, it's right here. This here, right there. A1, first term. And I need to know the common difference. Okay, I wasn't just handed the common difference, but it's pretty easy to find. Common difference is found by taking any term in the sequence and subtracting the one before it. Since I have the first two, I'm just going to use the first two. There it is. We have all the information we need to write the nth term equation. a sub 1, or excuse me, a sub n is a sub 1, which we know to be 7, plus unknown number of common differences, but we do know the common difference is negative 4. Now I'd like to pause right here and show you, not the video, but continuing it here, before I go on to finding the 15th term, I want to show you, if you wanted to, 
you could distribute the negative 4 and combine like terms if you wanted to. So just because we're big old nerds, Let's go ahead and distribute that negative 4 and combine our like terms and see what happens. We get a sub n equals 7. And I'm distributing a negative 4 to n, so minus 4n, and a negative 4 to negative 1 plus 4. And I'm going to combine my like terms to get the nth term could have been found by saying negative 4n plus 11. I need someone to raise a hand and tell me what that looks like negative 4n plus 11. That format should look familiar. It looks like the slope formula. It, well, slope intercept. Yeah, it looks like what you're used to graphing, doesn't it? It looks like y equals mx plus b. That's why it's in the same section as straight lines. Because if you distribute the common difference and combine your like terms, you could get a linear model for your sequence. You always just make sure that n begins at 1. If you recall from yesterday, whole positive numbers. So can't, n can't be 0, but n could be 1. See? So if you look at this, what appears to be a linear model, what does the common difference represent? If it was a linear equation, what is that common difference representing here? Come on, I know one of you sees it. Actually, I think a lot of you see it. You just don't want to talk to me. If this is y equals mx plus b, what is the common difference representing right now? The slope. Look at that. It's sitting in the slope place. The common difference can be thought of as being the slope. Oops, sorry. You couldn't see it. Being the slope of the sequence. Okay, what I just said to you would never make sense to anybody else other than me because a sequence can't have a slope. But it, it's working the same position as slope. It's telling you how much change from term to term. That's what slope is. It's how much change from term to term. I mean, it gives you the x and the y change, but it's still the same idea. And common difference, being able to be determined as a slope, is a big deal for arithmetic sequences. I just wanted you to see it. We are not, I mean, I could, I could use this now to find the 15th term, just plug in n equals 15, and it would be exactly the same as if I just plugged n equals 15 into this. I don't want to do it to this, just because I don't really use this, let's call it a linear model for arithmetic sequences very often. I'm a fan of sticking with this format, which I don't know if you caught this, but this looks remarkably similar to point slope form. If this said a n minus 7 equals m times n minus 1, wouldn't that look like point slope? The reason why it's a minus 1 right there is because the term number increases by 1 each time. Term 1, term 2, term 3, term 4, term 5. So our slope is always going to be a over 1. If you want to think of it like that, because we're going to the next term, the next term, the next term. But I prefer to do it this way because we do a lot of these things in IB. And in, by, in IB, unless you've been told to write it in a different form, you stop working. Because the last thing you want to do is accidentally distribute wrong and then this answer be wrong. Because then you just talked yourself out of the points that you would have earned for a correct answer here. IB, we don't reduce fractions. We don't simplify radicals. We don't rationalize denominators. Because... You demonstrated the knowledge, and we wouldn't want you to talk yourself out of points. So I'm going to use this. I'm going to find a sub 15. Oh, 15th term. That's n equals 15. So we get to plug in n equals 15 here and here. And you can grab a handy dandy calculator if you need to. It's fine. It's 7 minus 56 or something like that. Negative 49. There you go. You can have scientifics on the test. It's fine. It's whatever. Bet you'll get negative 49. Again, 
Was that the best? Was this the fastest way for me to get to A sub 15? No, of course not. You know what you could have done? You could have just said, oh, I need to subtract four. How many times? Um, 11 more times. It's already been subtracted, or excuse me, 12 more times. It's already been subtracted three times. Or I could have just said, I know I'm going to need 14 of those comma differences after the number seven, which is actually what this did. But you could have done it without writing a formula. You could have common sense your way to it. So if the test question says, what is, here's some numbers, find a sub 15. I, I mean, I don't care how you get to it as long as you didn't cheat to it. But I want to make sure I'm developing the good habits of writing equations, finding common differences, manipulating equations, utilizing equations. I'm trying to develop all the good habits when the math is easy. Also, this should be pure review. Pure, right? You've done this before, haven't you? Algebra 1? Something like it. Maybe some of you did, maybe some of you didn't. just depends on how far the teacher got because it would have been done at the end of the year if you did do it. So that's how we work it if we are just given a sequence. What's another way it could have been done? Well, the information could be presented slightly differently. Instead of me giving you the first handful of terms, I'll give you one term. This time I'll tell you the common difference. I'm telling you a sub 6 is 12. The difference is 5. I mean, we know D. D is 5. That's good. I don't know A1. But more information was given to you that you can utilize in this equation. Do I have somebody that can see what we can utilize? What we were given? Ilya, what do, what do we see? It goes up by 5. So we could put that number right here. What else were we given? Well, this is the sixth number. But what can I do with that knowledge is what I'm saying. Knowing it's the sixth number. Yeah, 12 could go right here. And where does the six go? Smart? N. I was told right here that N is six and A sub six is 12. So we know n equals 6, and we know that when we use n equals 6, the result will be 12. So that 6 will go here, this 12 will go there, and this 5 goes right there. And I'll just write the common difference in a different color because I didn't identify it with purple. Times 5, whatever. Hey, look, we're one step away from knowing what A1 is. You can just subtract 25 from both sides. And you'll get that A1 is negative 13. There you have it. In your nth, nth term formula, you can put a negative 13 right there, and you know that this number is 5. And if you want to know the 15th term, you just drop a 15 right there. So I'm just going to write out the, the uh, general term. A1, we said, was negative 13. And we know that D is 5. Again, if you felt like distributing that 5 and combining your like terms, you could. You could. It would be 5n minus 18 if you wanted to. I don't see a reason to, though. Because we can now find a sub 15 by using n equals 15 right there. So negative 13 plus 15 minus 1 times 5. Again, if you needed to, you grab a calculator to see what's up. But this is going to be negative 13 plus 70. So I wrote these questions to start off as easy as possible. And then part B 
a little bit more challenging than part A. You had to realize that you were given an N and an AN. So you had to read it, realize it was an input-output. Part C would be what I would call the most challenging of the three, where I don't give you the common difference, I don't give you the first number. Instead, I give you two random terms. I could have picked any two I wanted from the sequence that I created. I chose the fifth term and the eighth term. But what can I do with that knowledge is the question. What could you find using that knowledge? Difference of what? The common difference, you mean? How? How could I find the common difference? Well, let's just say it was last ditch effort, it's make or break time, you know. I tell you what's the common difference, give it to me, you got a hundred, don't give it to me, you got a zero. Like you would try some stuff, right? Okay, what would you try to do? Well, from going from A5 to A8, did your number get bigger or smaller? Smaller. Okay, so what does that tell you about your common difference? There you go, it's going to be a negative. And how far did we have to go? How many terms? We went three terms in 7.5 distance. Hmm, what could I do with knowing that it took me, I went down 7.5, and I went over three terms. You divide, them. you divide them. What do we call that normally when we find the distance between two things over the distance between two things? Oh, oh the slope! That's right, the common difference. Ryan, you already said the word. Remember, the slope is represented by the common difference. We treat the ANs as our outputs, as our Y values. So 10.5 would be Y2, whereas 18 is Y1. X2 is, would be 8, even though it's an N. I know it's not an X, but we're treating them as Xs and Ys. They're inputs and outputs. And what we get is that our common difference will be negative 7.5 over a span of three numbers. So negative 2.5 is the common difference. Because it's going to be the same number every time, all you have to do is look to see how far apart these numbers are, how far apart these numbers are, and divide. Just like you would have done for slope. It's identically done. And if I'm treating those as input outputs, and I have a slope now, I could do the sequence version of point-slope form. I know that n is 5 when a5 is 18. So I can easily fill out the nth term formula. So we knew that a n was 18. We're going to figure out what a1 is here in just a second. But we know that n was 5. And we found that the common difference was negative 2.5. Yes, sir. N is right there because it's A sub N. And, and, and I could have used this one. I could have said N was 8 and A N was 10.5 if I wanted to. But retreat, because this is A sub 5, remember that little number down there is your N value. It's what term number are you working with? Oh, I'm working with the fifth term? Oh, that fifth term was 18. Gets us this. If you grab your calculator, 4 times negative 10.5 is negative 10. Then just add 10 to both sides. And we now know that A sub 1 is 18. We can write 
the general term now, the nth term. Did I not add? Yeah, it's 28. Eighteen plus ten, eighteen. Mm -hmm. A sub n is twenty eight plus n minus one times negative two point five. And we can now find A sub fifteen by throwing fifteen here and here, and we are ready to roll. I'll just grab a calculator for that one. 28 plus 14 times negative 2.5 is negative 7. Before we go on to everybody's favorite part of mathematics, word problems. I want to make sure that you have absolutely no questions for me. And any processes that we did, why did you do that? Could you have done something different? I was thinking of doing it this way. Would I have gotten the same answers if any of those kinds of questions? Yes, Daniel. It's not really a question. I'm just asking. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason D equals the, uh, the 10 minus 18 over the 8 minus 5. This right here? Is the, because those are the inputs and the outputs. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so we the A sub N's are the outputs where the N value is the input. Yep. So that's why. Now we don't we're not gonna write down a slope formula that uses A N's and things like that in it, but we just understand ah uh, it's input outputs, especially because it says back here that the let's see where was it? It says something about inputs, outputs. There we go. The inputs are whole positive numbers. So those are the N values. These are your N's. Your in values are your inputs, and the outputs are real numbers. The outputs are the actual a in values. So, yeah, so it works just like slope. Mm -hmm. The only difference is we don't have anything in between terms, right? There's no such thing as the 6.4th term. Doesn't make any sense. We can have the sixth term, we can have the seventh term. And the quote unquote slope. Common difference just tells us how to get from term to term. We can't connect them with lines. They're, they're standalone dots. Any others? That's a good question. Just making sure we fully understand it. I know everybody wants to hurt and get to the word problems. They like them so much. I know I'm always amped to get to them too. You guys do me a favor though. Try to contain the enthusiasm just a little bit. You get a little raucous. Nothing. Okay. All right. Well, Susie is saving money to attend summer camp. She opened a savings account with seven hundred fifty dollars. Are, are you going to make it, Mackenzie? You look like you're passing out. Shoof. Go get go get a drink of water. Turn up that. Air. You had water? No, no. I said go get a drink. Take a walk. Because it'll change your blood pressure, which gets fresh oxygen to your brain. She's high. Oh, no, was it? He's called you out. <laughs> anyway, Susie saved her money to attend summer camp. She opened a savings account with $750 and deposits an additional $245 into the account each month. Susie either has an amazing allowance or has a job. One of the two. Okay. Here's what we need to know. How long does Susie need to save? If this camp costs three thousand dollars to go to, that's what we need to know. And again, we're not going to cheese it. We're not going to say, but I could get to the answer faster. I could too. What we're going to say is, how would we develop the good habits, the good math skills to make it so that we can solve any question? Maybe the best thing you could do is list a couple terms of the sequence. That might be a really good place to start. We begin this account with $750. And after one month of saving, 
how much money is going to be in the account? No idea. You don't? Nine ninety five. Nine ninety five. Bird, how'd you get that number? Nine ninety five. Yeah, I mean, that's always a valid answer, at least around me, but uh, mathematically, how'd you know? Oh, oh, you you added this number to this number. Yeah, that's the common difference then, isn't it? Oh, okay, so we, we dot, dot, dot means goes on forever. So we already know that because this is what we're adding each month, we know that the common difference is $245. And be darned. We know what the first term is. This word problem is actually a very easy question because they hand you the first term and they hand you the common difference. A better question would have been like, you know, we don't know how much she started with, but we do know that in the fifth month she had this much money and in the eighth month she had that much money. And then how long would she need to save? By the way, I chose five and eight for a reason because this is how you would have approached it. You would have treated it as an in input output, figured out your common difference, filled out your formula with what you know, use the point slope version of the general term and solve for A1. So you do have the skills, even though you haven't seen me do that with a word problem that doesn't matter, you have those skills. I told you you should write the nth term formula every time you're gonna use it. If you do that in your homework, you will accidentally know that that formula. It'll be it'll be in there by osmosis. You won't have been able to you won't have been able to say when it got in there, but it'll be there. Let's fill out what we know. We don't know well right now we don't know a n. But any term of the sequence can be found by taking the number seven hundred fifty and adding n minus one common differences, which are two hundred forty five dollars. Susie could use this formula to figure out how much money she's going to have after any number of months of solving, of uh, saving, excuse me, long ass word. Susie has a goal. Yes, Ilya? Why can't Well, Susie has a goal. And that goal is 3,000. So this actually is an A in value. And what we need to know is how long, meaning number of months, in would this take? So we can take this 3,000 and go right there with it. But the, the equation could be used to figure out how much we have after any number of months. Now we'll take one more piece of information and use it and say, we know we're trying to get this account up to $3,000. Our job is to solve for the number of months that is going to take. What should we do first? Come on, guys. Hmm? Subtract 750 from both sides using good old sad map. $2,250 equals N minus 1 times 245. I could distribute the 245, but I don't want to. I feel like that's one extra step. Instead, I'll realize that this is multiplication because I can cancel that. All I have to do is divide. I believe it gets me like 9.18-ish nine, nine or something like that. 9.184. Might as well go to three sig fig, uh, three uh, decimal places, excuse me, sig figs is IB. Go to three decimal places because, like I said, the goal is after this class, every one of you is an AP pre calc with me next year, unless you're currently a senior. I don't know if I have any seniors in here, but that would be the goal. And in there, we have to go to three decimals. So we'll call this 9.184. And I don't need to use the approximates because. We've said, this is how we're going to round. Go, okay, fine. The last thing we need to do is get in by itself. You just add one to both sides. And what that tells us is, Susie will need to save for 10.184 months. 
I'm sorry? Huh? Oh, that's right. That's right. Gosh, dog it. These things have to be whole numbers, don't they? Yeah. So, Susie, she went at month 10, and the next time she goes is month 11. Here's what I know. This number means takes more than 10 months. So that means Susie would need to save for 11 months to be ordered in order to be able to afford this summer camp. Questions, comments, concerns? Easy peasy, lemon squeezy? Nerds. <laughs>